Can running your gaming PC using the local administrator account provide you with better gaming performance? This is a subject that's been discussed a lot lately, and what propped it up was an investigation done by Hardware Unboxed when they worked with AMD to figure out why Zen 5's gaming performance was lower than expected. Steve has made quite a few videos about this and found using the admin account boosted the performance of AMD's Zen 4 and Zen 5 CPUs. This then prompted me to run my own benchmarks, which has an Intel Core i9 13900K on my test bench to see if Intel users can potentially experience the same uplifts. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. I want to preface this video by saying this was done purely for science and for fun. I'm not recommending anyone actually run a Windows administrator account as their daily driver as this can pose a serious security risk to their system. Now, for those of you who are not in the know, you might be wondering what is this administrator account you speak of? This account is built into the operating system but is typically hidden by default for security reasons. It has elevated privileges which means it can bypass user account control UAC and access almost everything on the system without restrictions. This also means that any malware or malicious software that gains access to this account can execute harmful actions without any restrictions. Along with that having no UAC prompts makes it easier for malicious programs to make changes without your knowledge. This risk is further exacerbated if you're connected to a network which I'm sure almost all of you are as that administrator account is more vulnerable to a remote attack. Those are just some of the reasons why you should avoid using the administrator account as your daily driver, especially if you don't know what you're doing or have a bad habit of visiting questionable sites. It's overall way less secure. With all that said, I was prompted on making this video because recently Hardware Unboxed made a video showcasing performance of the Ryzen 7 9700X and 7700X using this administrator account and saw performance uplifts in various titles. There's been a lot of discussion this past month surrounding Ryzen 9000 and its underwhelming gaming performance. Hub have been at the forefront of this subject and they've been communicating with AMD to figure out if maybe there was something holding back the architecture. Was there something wrong with what reviewers did? Was there something wrong with their test bench, etc. During this discussion, the usage of the Windows administrator account came up and AMD stated they had used this account to test and benchmark games in their internal labs as it's required by their own automated software. If you've been following me for a while now, you'll know that I'm someone who's always tinkering around with my test bench and showcasing various performance benchmarks using different configurations, testing out different overclocks and more. So I was quite intrigued by Hub's video and wanted to test this out on a platform which uses an Intel CPU to see if the potential performance improvements would be the same. I even benchmarked 19 different games as that would give us more data to work with and lets us look at which ones benefit more and which ones do not. So let's move on to the test system specifications. For the CPU, we have an Intel Core i9-13900K, which has its P cores running at 5.7 GHz, E cores are locked at 4.6 GHz, and the cache is overclocked to 5 GHz. We've got 48 GB of Patriot Viper Extreme DDR5 running at 7600 mega transfers, CL36 with manually adjusted timings. The motherboard is an MSI Z790 Carbon Max Wi-Fi 2. For the GPU, we have an MSI RTX 4090 and it has a plus 205 offset to its core and plus 1500 to the memory. For the rest of the system specs, you guys can check the video description down below. I've also done several changes of my own OS tweaks involving changes to the power plan I use, core parking policies, etc. There's just way too much to list here so just keep that in mind that we're not dealing with a system that's been configured to run out of the box but one that has been tuned quite extensively. All the games I tested were ran at 1080p using a high preset no upscaling or frame generation was turned on, and a lot of the post-processing like motion blur and depth of field were also turned off, along with that ray tracing was disabled for obvious reasons. So starting us off is the new monkey game everyone is talking about, and that's Black Myth Wukong. The game is absolutely gorgeous, and I've been having quite a blast playing it lately. When it comes to our testing though, nothing really changes at all. We saw the exact same performance. Using the admin account didn't provide us with any uplift. I would say that's a good thing but we'll talk more about that later on. The next game we have is Horizon Forbidden West and with this game
game, we do see a performance boost, 6% to our average FPS and 1% lows. So it's not a huge boost and you really wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Now, a game that does show a larger performance uplift is Remnant 2. And in this title, we see a 9% uplift to both our average FPS and 1% lows. With that said, it's not like the performance on the regular local account was bad to begin with. And even though it's a 9% bump, I still wouldn't call that a high enough performance uplift for someone to justify running the admin account. The next game we have is Gears 5, and in this game we see a 7% bump to our average FPS and 10% for the 1% lows. I wanted to test this because apparently with the upcoming Windows 11 24H2 update, it includes some CPU branch prediction optimization, I think it's more particular to AMD CPUs, and users have reported a pretty sizable performance uplift. Hub also tested this and found a staggering performance boost even on a 14600K. So I'll probably be testing that out later on when I get the chance. Forza Horizon 5 is next, and this game provides us with our largest performance uplift at 14% for the average FPS and 7% for the 1% lows. While the performance was already stellar to begin with, this kind of performance uplift is still nice to see. Though once again, you will have to decide for yourself how much that extra performance is worth it to risk using a vulnerable account. For a racing game like this, I doubt many will. Hitman 3 is another game which already had stellar performance to begin with, however the admin account still nets us a 6% gain for the average FPS and 5% for the 1% lows. A Plague Tale Requiem shows us that by using the admin account, our average FPS improves by 9% and 6% for the 1% lows. So that's decent, but again, for a single player title like this though, that isn't necessarily fast paced, you really don't need more performance than what the local account is already offering you. Hogwarts Legacy is another title where I saw a bit of a bump in performance to the average FPS, but the 1% lows remained the same, so overall smoothness didn't really feel any different. The last game we'll take a look at is Watch Dogs Legion, where we attain a 7% bump in performance and our 1% lows improved by a 6% margin. Now I did mention earlier I benchmarked 19 games and the reason why we didn't need to go over all of them is because they hardly showed any performance difference at all. You can see in these graphs showing the differences when it comes to the average FPS and then our 1% lows that performance barely changed. We're talking about single digit deltas where the user wouldn't be able to perceive those changes anyways. So overall with our 19 game average, we see that by using the admin account, we get a 4% bump to the average FPS, and then our 1% lows increased by a mere 3%. That's it. I for one am actually quite happy with those results because now I have the peace of mind knowing that there isn't any tangible performance being left on the table for gamers using an Intel CPU and also running the local account. This is great because I know there are many hardware enthusiasts out there who are looking to push their system as much as possible, but if it means that you have to run a vulnerable, less secure account, is it really worth it then? And the answer to that question, well, if you're on Intel at least, is a hard no. For those of you who are looking to boost your performance in games, there are much better and safer alternatives such as simply going into the game's graphics and display menu than adjusting settings from there. Use upscaling or frame gen if you have to, it's much better than running your system in a vulnerable state like this and there's a reason why it was hidden in the first place. It would basically be the equivalent to you living in your home without a front door. With that said, it's clear that AMD, Intel and Microsoft should come together and find a way to optimize Windows so that gamers can get the full potential from their CPU and the performance impact impact from the security process is little to none. Perhaps we'll see something like this in a future Windows update. Nonetheless, I hope this video does help out those who are running a modern Intel CPU who were wondering if they'd see any significant performance boosts using an admin account. I have some more tests and benchmarks coming out in the future, so stay tuned for that content. As for now, that will do it for this one and we'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.